The lead story in all the liberal media yesterday was the outrageously insane $83 million verdict that a kangaroo court awarded whack job E. Jean Carroll, a crazy columnist who made up a bunch of lies about Donald Trump, and then he denied them and called her a whack job. And so then she sued and won. And so she did the entire talk show circuit yesterday. Now, the verdict was actually issued on Friday, but that's you know, sort of a news dump day. It's the end of the week. So the liberal media wanted to make sure that every American knows that Donald Trump owes this completely unhinged, delusional woman $83 million. And here she is on Rachel Maddow's show, just one of the dozens of shows that she did yesterday, explaining what she plans on doing with some of the money. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look like? Yes, or, Rachel. Or, yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? It's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh. All right. All right. Okay. That is not how an actual victim would talk about such a serious matter, because she's not a victim. She is, as Donald Trump rightly pointed out, a whack job. Her lawyers did the best that they could to try to clean up her image and coach her about what to say, but every time she is allowed to speak live on national television is a disaster. This was her on CNN a few years ago. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> I'm not even going to rehash this case because nobody with two brain cells actually believes a word that this woman says. A woman who was a big fan, admittedly, of The Apprentice and post about how fantastic Donald Trump was on Facebook years after he supposedly attacked her because that's what a real victim would do. They would admire their attacker and watch his television show every week. But sadly, this case does illustrate how morally bankrupt the Democrat Party and the liberal media is, because there's not a lawyer on planet Earth, there's not a political pundit of either party who actually even remotely believes a single word that comes out of this woman's mouth. But they're pretending to in order to use it as a political weapon. And in a sane society, her case would have been thrown out of court, and Donald Trump would have countersued her, and she would have filed bankruptcy because making up those kinds of lies should actually destroy someone's life. There is one Republican, however, who is pretending to believe her story. Actually, she's pretending to be a Republican as well, and that is neocon Nikki Haley. I absolutely trust the jury, and I think that they made their decision based on the evidence. I just don't think that should take him off the ballot. I think the American people will take him off the ballot. I think that's the best way to go forward is not let him play the victim, let him play the loser. That's what we want him to do at the end of the day. This is a woman who clearly has no soul. Imagine siding with such a ridiculous abuse of the justice system, which is something that you would usually only find in third world communist countries when somebody upsets the regime and they would trump up some charges against them, no pun intended. And now it's happening in the United States. And a fellow fake Republican, a supposed Republican, a pretend Republican is siding with them. And when she was pressed about this absurdity on Fox News, she doubled down because that's what liars do. It cracks me up that people try and overanalyze. I just tell the truth as I see it. I think there have been politics played with prosecutors that have brought on some of these cases. I think there's been politics played even with the judges. But I do think American juries still get it right. They listen to the evidence. They make the decision based on the evidence. And I do still trust the, any American that sits on a jury. I trust that they're making the right decision. Any American on any jury she trusts, even though they're Democrats and it wouldn't even matter what the alleged charges were, they would convict just because it's Donald Trump. He is trying to run for president yes. again. And, and right and, now is leading. And right now the polls suggest uh, it's a <laughs> coin flip. It's very close. Um, have you heard from Joe Biden's campaign arm about potentially campaigning against the former president, Donald Trump? No. Are you interested in doing so? Do anything I can. 
Mm. That's a yes. But this is just the tip of the iceberg of the lawfare that they're waging against Donald Trump. Aside from the criminal cases that he's facing, he is also facing six civil cases by Democrat members of Congress who are suing him, claiming that he endangered their lives on January 6th, and I believe by two police officers as well. In December, a federal appeals court ruled that Donald Trump can be sued civilly and held liable for the mostly peaceful protest on January 6th by anybody who was there and upset about it and claimed that it was his fault. Someone who recently had a change of heart about Donald Trump, however, is rapper Snoop Dogg, who says that he has nothing but love for Donald Trump. You may recall that he endorsed Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Imagine being a gangster rapper and endorsing Hillary Clinton. And he made a music video where he depicted himself shooting Donald Trump. But now he actually says nothing but love for the Don. And why, you ask? Because politics is so dirty that Donald Trump pardoned the co-founder of Death Row Records, Michael Harris, in an attempt to try to appeal to the black community. And so obviously it's working because now Snoop Dogg, who was signed with Death Row Records, that's how he built his career as a rapper. Now Snoop Dogg is a fan of his again. Speaking of other kinds of criminals, Donald Trump has a plan for them, however, that I'm on board with. We have no choice within moments of my inauguration. We will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in America. We have no choice because this is not sustainable. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. They know that. Yes, and if you agree, I'm sure you'll enjoy my new Sorry, No Vacancy, the Port the Mall shirt, which you should order from my online store at markdice.com. Click the link in the description below. It's in the style of a neon no vacancy sign from a hotel, and it's probably going to get banned for being too offensive. So order them while you can from markdice.com and click the link in the description below. Ed, check them out.